Yo, what's going on, everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour Podcast. Yes, hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 269. <laughs> 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 uh, I hate myself. Yeah, thank you for joining us tonight. Brian, how you doing? Ah. <sighs> Jim, I'm just imagining you being a 69 and it's more of a 7 because you kick your feet up in the air like a girl. <laughs> and you're just laying flat. <laughs> well, I already sound like a baby seal dying while it's going on, so, you know, you just had to be experienced that way. <sighs> Why has it got to be a baby seal? Why? You couldn't just say seal. You had to say baby seal. Damn but it. <laughs> but, Brian, it's, it's disturbing, but also kind of cute. <sighs> There's nothing cute with that act, Jim. That is an affront to nature. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> What's going on, Chambers? Not so, much. first of all, um, sorry, everyone. Uh, Jim and I were both on vacation last week. Uh, first one of the year for me, and it was just like, yeah, I knew right away we weren't going to get shit out. So, um, apologize, not getting the episode out. But uh, did run into Chambers during vacation, at least one of the days. We drank yes. it up pretty heavily. Yeah, we even tried out a brewery. We did the gimmick, right? We did. We tried so many beers. Yeah, we went to Mudhead Brewing down in Wildwood, New Jersey, and we lucked out because we got there right before the crowd, and we we dabbled in some brewskis. Um, every year, that's been for the past three years. I think we, uh, the wife and I, usually go there. Um, really good food, but uh, I would say oh, is it beer. expensive? You're gonna drop a few shekels, that's for sure. It's not as much as your uh, as our in the city meeting. <laughs> Somehow it was like, oh, do you, oh. so to put it is into that, perspective for everyone from that little night out Brian and I had a couple weeks ago, we went to a brewery where we got everyone got drinks, we got meals, and between four adults and three kids, it came out to the same amount my bar tab was for just my wife and I at that goddamn bar. <laughs> In Center City, Philly. <laughs> um, Just for yeah. a little perspective. There you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> almost the exact same amount. <laughs> but, Chambers, are you the type now, um, now that you're home from vacation, like, are you kind of happy you're home, kind of back to the normalcy? Yeah, it's nice to be back. Also, we had a little flea incident. With a couple dogs that we had with us, so that would put a little bit of a damper on the second half of the old vacay there, but yeah, it is nice to be, it is kind of weirdly nice to be just like back home base, back to the grind. It's like, it's nice to take a break, but after, you know, like, I don't know, day five or six, I'm always like, eh, I'm kind of done. I'm ready. <clears throat> yeah. Is that just part of getting old? Like, I can't remember if I was always like that, but... I feel like it's definitely, it has to be part of getting old, right? Like that you're just like, I'm ready to get back to the normalcy. I want my bed and I want my bidets. Right. I was, I am so out of, I I have a bidet in every toilet in my house. And I'm still starting, after a week down to shore, I'm still wiping first before I'm like, oh shit, I have my bidet. Just wasting inventory over here. It's ridiculous. (laughs) Out of practice. (sighs) Jim, before we talk about our beer. I do want to bring back the game that I said I was going to do every episode, but my mind quickly forgot, which is doing that little card game I have, the little video game trivia. Oh, yeah. If you get it wrong, you got a drink. And if you get it right, I got a drink. So are you ready? Let's do it. Fizco releases which toxic energy drink in the 2014 game Sunset Overdrive? Oh, balls. Oh, Oh, I have no I I couldn't even begin to tell you. I would be mad when I hear it because I actually really And I know like you love game. that game. Yeah, no, yeah. that game's great, but it's been like probably since 2015 or 16 since I played it. So, yeah, I forget. Overcharged Delirium XT. I would not have gotten that. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty pretty detailed. So, sip up, James. Drink it up. And and then we got one other question. From which other video game franchise are the Raving Rabbids originally a spinoff? Rayman. There you go. So, cheers to that. One and one. I'll take that. Ah, so, Jambers, what um, what you sipping on for tonight's episode? 
Well, Bri, I always like to dabble when I'm down to shore and bring something back that I haven't ba had before. So, from the Gusto Brewing Company out of Cape May, New Jersey, this is mm. the Rumble Pack. So this is in just an IPA, 6.5% alcohol. Uh, I might need to get my glasses out for this. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I can't read that shit. But, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's very, very good. Uh, it's, I mean, it's an IPA. And I mainly bought it for, you know, obviously the art. Inspired by the good old Super Mario 64. I don't even know how they get away with just putting the, I was going to say, the, the star they're walking a fine line with the star and that, that font. <laughs> the white in the eyes are a little cummy. Not sure if it comes through on here. So maybe with the drips there, that's just enough. But yeah, that's questionable right there. You know what else is questionable? The goddamn price. 22 bucks for a four pack. Fuck. Jesus. Is it so far uh, seem worth that steep price no i mean it's a pretty standard ipa it's definitely less hoppy it's a lot less hoppy actually than um a lot of other ones so like it's definitely a smooth uh, even for the 6.5 percent so i use this too much but if you don't typically like ipas this isn't a bad one to try like it'll still have that hot bite that you'll probably hate but it's way more subdued than a lot of the other ones out there nice yeah, speaking of going down to shore, so I ran and got a six-pack. Um, <clears throat> I went to some random beer store, but I got from Cape May Brewing. We've talked about them many times before, and I got their Citrus Shandy The Grove, and 4.5%, my God, is this thing good. My wife, who hates beer, like even drinks this and was like, this is pretty damn good. Um Yep, of course, they have a write-up. The Grove drinks like you pick the fruit this morning, squeeze it into a glass, and poof, turned it into the most intensely crushable beer you've ever seen. Snappy, super bright, and ridiculously refreshing, the Grove is sweet and tart with a brilliant aroma reminiscent of walking through a citrus grove at harvest. So I will say, um, if you've ever had a Shandy, most Shandies are very easy to drink but they're super super fruity so if you don't like fruit flavor things it's not for you uh a little cloudy uh but it's it's damn delicious now i think i only had two at a time previously because i think the sweetness from the like fruit flavor gets to be a little bit heavy but at 4.5 percent dude you could crush these very easily and they were perfect for the beach so i'd say give them a try while the season's still here although it's already friggin' August. Like, this shit, I cannot believe how fast. Like, my kids are three weeks from school already. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, someone already asked me about, like, the football pool that uh, my family runs. And I was like, oh, God, that is coming around already, isn't it? It sure is, Chambers. It sure is. But, yeah, I also learned a little lesson. Uh, so there's a place in, in Cape May I've talked about before called Cold Spring Brewery. It's built in, like, this old historic village town. And when I go there, and if they have it, I get me their sarsaparilla, because goddamn delicious. It's almost God. kind of like a, it's almost like a root beer, and you can get it with it mixed with one of their other beers. So I got it mixed with like probably one of their wheats, and it's delicious. But I would advise anyone who goes down there or just gets a boozy sarsaparilla in general that's like home brewed, drink it in like the first day. Uh, I got mm. two thirty-two ounce cans, and uh, yeah, it wasn't bad by like day three, but it was definitely not exactly enjoyable either it was the mm. thing that i'm drinking just to drink at that point instead of going oh i love this mm, okay so word to the wise drink it fresh is it like uh the not your father's root beer where it's like you have one you're like this is pretty good and then you have like a second one you're like okay like it's a little much it's, I, it's a little too sugary i always try to savor it and actually like it really is just like a soda and a beer mixed together when you get the boozy kind so it isn't like that uh, sugar explosion that the Not Your Fathers is are, or mm. and and especially a syrupy. So it's like like even he tells you it's like if you let it sit, you have to like kind of tilt it back and forth because the beer and the sarsaparilla separates. So you have to like almost manually mix it back yourself if you let it sit for a while too. Such old timey shit, Jim. Damn right. <laughs> I think you just like saying you're having a sarsaparilla. I think that's the only reason you got it. That is part of it. I saw it and I went, <laughs> the first time I ever had it, I was like, a sarsaparilla? Where the hell else am I going to find this? And I had it and it was delicious. So they don't have it every time I'm there, but I always make the venture. Nice. And I will give you, everyone, a fair warning. Um, if you go on the boardwalk 
and you want to order multiple pizzas, be ready to spend money. Because when I show up to the beach, meeting some friends down there, I was like, let's get three pizzas, three larges. I knew it was going to be expensive, but for that and the Sprite, it was $95. And I went, Jesus Christ. And then all I wanted to do was buy some beer. They have a whole freezer full of six packs. Perfect. Can I buy a six pack of Blue Moon? Or whatever, or no, Lining Kugel Summer Shandy. Oh no, we only sell per bottle and it's $8 per bottle. I was like, all right, give me three bottles. Well, I can't give you the bottles. We got to open them because there's an open container law. So I need to pour them into big cups. So I was like, split them between two giant cups. It was the most convoluted goddamn process to just get some beer to the beach. So bring your own six pack. That's my best advice I'll give you. There was one point when we were walking from one pier to another, and you can drink beer on the piers, but you can't take them onto the boardwalk proper. So, like, you know, we had all of our kids, so we were just having them go on all the rides and all that. So I had my beer in my hand. I was like, all right, well, just taking it with me down to the next pier. Who gives a shit? And as I'm walking, I there's definitely one person who was like, uh, beer's not allowed on here. And I was like, kind of kept walking. I was like, really? <laughs> Fucking narcs? Well, it's funny because when I had these cans on the beach, my uh, a cop literally drives right in front of me on his little ATV, just straight up looks at me, and I didn't give it no thought. And, and my wife was like, "Are you allowed to have those?" I was like, "I don't know. I think so." She's like, "I don't think you're allowed to have just like open beer." I was like, "It, it was like nobody was there." I was like, hey, "Who the fuck cares?" Like he didn't care. I didn't care. Like nobody actually cares. As long as you're not being obnoxious, they don't give a shit. Yeah, and also the rules for that depend on the beach because some are like you have to pour it into a, like a cup where you know like a solo cup. Uh, where I was staying, you could put keep your cans out, but it had to be in like a koozie or something like that. It had to be just kind of covered. Mm. Yeah, it's all it's all but... for show. It's all optics. They don't really care. They just don't want it to be like, oh, we're the scumbag beach where you can drink. Yeah, but <laughs> not like in the old days when my buddies and I would take like a four foot hookah down to the goddamn beach in Seattle City and just. <laughs> I'm sure there still are plenty of beaches like that. But, yeah, uh, it seems like a lot of the ones in Jersey, for the most part, you're trying to do the the perception. Just hide your drinking. Your Jersey. No one cares. <laughs> it's not that yeah. fancy. Yeah, let's not let's not act like it's all clayessy. <laughs> so, Jane Birds, what, uh, what you been able – I mean, shit, since you've been on vacation, did you bring your Switch with you? Have you been playing anything? I did bring my Switch with me, and oh, does Slay the Spire have its hooks in me? Oh, dear God. So, Have you just just been replaying that over and over and over? If I'm not playing it on my Switch, I'm playing it on my phone. Right. I think I have like 50 hours in on my phone already. Just a phone version. I think I'm up to like 20-some on the Switch. The hooks, Brian. Jesus the hooks. Christ. And it's uh, funny, like on the Switch, it took me forever just to get like past a run with the first guy before even unlocking anyone else. And on the phone, I'm like, so, like, you have to beat the game with the first three people first before you can get, like, the final true final boss. So mm -hmm. after that's when, like, if you beat the true final boss, it's it's a corrupted heart, basically, the heart of the Spire. Then you get, like, the true ending for each character. So on my phone, I'm currently working to try to do that with all four characters. And on the Switch, I'm still working my way up there because I just keep dying all the time. So much luck at the draw! So there's basically, it tries to get you to play through a minimum eight times, like, to completion. At the very least, yeah. And there's all these in-game achievements and crap you can do, too. So, I mean, mm. there's content. Oh, is there content? Is the phone just easier, or is it because you put more time into it? Uh, probably just a thing of time and just dumb luck. Hmm. Okay. So and, like, <laughs> and, like, if I blow through the game with, like, one character, then I go back later on, I completely forget the winning strategy. Because, like, each guy will give you a couple different ways you can play them. So sometimes I just start as, like, a mishmash with, like, no strategy, and I just get whomped. But mm. eventually it all comes together. Nice. Like, earlier so, today, I lost on the Corrupted Heart. <clears throat> and, oh, does that suck? Oh, does it suck to die on the final boss? These fucking roguelikes. All right, Chambers. So, <laughs> already hitting our technical difficulties. Twice, what I was asking you twice is... Twice it died on us. <laughs> with Slay the Spire, has playing that kind of reignited your want to, like, game a lot more? Even if it's not just that game, but gaming in general. Has it kind of helped with that? I, I, I think it is a bit, because it's like, between this and Fallout 4, it's just like... Man, I really wish I was sitting down my games right now. It doesn't feel like work anymore. 
Yeah. Which yeah. I think is kind of, and I hate saying it this way because it is like people are paying for our game review requests. It's probably why I haven't started Postal yet. And I really want to within the next week, hopefully. But it's just like we spent two years making, you know, playing games feel like work. That it's just like, fuck, I have an assignment I have to do. So it's just yeah. like that damn procrastination kicking in. No, no, I'm right there with you. And I think, I, you know, you and I, I think we're both a little bit on the burnout side like we talked about. Um I've been definitely more doing more gaming than I have in months, I would say. So, like, my my casual game I mentioned last time has been Call of Duty. That's still kind of the case. Um, even though, like, this is probably the Call of Duty, like, my KD is the worst. Like, I'm just doing challenges and fucking around, so I really don't care. So, I'm having more fun with it. Um, I, my son was, like, doing this Fallout or um, Fortnite challenge where they had a fall guys and like you could earn something. And I literally in two matches completed all the quests for him. And he was so excited. So he's like, Oh my God, you got them all in like two games. I was like, yeah. So like, that was cool. Um, Bri with uh, uh, real quick with the announcement that uh, five nights at Freddy's is coming to dead by daylight. You're going to get him into that now. So, well, he's obsessed with Five Nights at Freddy's. He loves the movie. He wants me to play the regular games. What I'm willing to bank right now is that the Five Nights at Freddy's is just skins. It's not going to be a character. Because every time they do Dead by Daylight X something, like they did it with Attack on Titan, um, uh, Slipknot, was it? Yes. Or Slipknot or Metallica. I can't remember which one. I know they did Metallica. no, no, it wasn't Metallica. Um, fuck, it's killing me. But, Was but like every time they do X, it always just ends up being skins. The latest collaboration, which I was just watching as as we had to take our little break, is they're doing it with Castlevania, and now they have Dracula as a killer and uh, Trevor Belmont. I forget if it's Trevor or Simon, but so yeah, these motherfuckers they're they're just getting IPs left right. and right. What if it's Richter though? <laughs> Nobody wants Richter. Fuck Everyone likes Richter. No, no. <laughs> Don't even get me started. But uh yeah, so like I've been I've been doing that. Um I went back um a game called Lakeview Cabin. I think I've talked about it before like years ago. I don't even I might have even streamed it. It's a like it was it was all started as a flash game, but then it's a kind of cutesy pixel art style, but it's all like horror games, shocker. Um and the c- collection is like there's a hub zone, which is a movie theater in like New York, and you go into the movies and they represent like the one is kind of like uh, Halloween, the one is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the other is Friday the 13th, and the other one's Alien. But it's actually like not only just a ton of fan service, it's also there's like so many endings and things. So I keep going back and playing that. I've been playing the shit out of Super Metroid. Uh, I'm like three bosses in at this point. I did have to do my first look up though, I will say, because I was like, what the fuck? I bombed everything. I've looked everywhere. I was like, I thought I fell down this hole that I couldn't get back up. And I thought I did it too early because everyone's like, oh, you need a certain suit to go through the gas. And I was like, what the fuck? And then it turned out it was like just this one area where I didn't quite do the bombing that I thought I did. And it was very specific. And then after that, it all opened up. So yeah, I'm I'm gaming like a fiend right now. So I've just been tearing through, trying to play but enjoy and just finish it off. So yeah, just enjoying the shit out of it. And now that yeah. I am back from vacation, like you said, doing the game reviews, I already had Toilets in Wonderland like basically ready to go. So now that I'm done vacation, done doing other shit, that that's on the top of my list. So. Yeah, but we have SA uh, for this week. We have a bo- us a bonus episode. We got reviews. Pardon me. We got to record soon too. We're only like three months behind on that. Yeah. <laughs> so Banner Jambers. year for the show, everybody. Banner year. <laughs> but Chambers, speaking of uh, you know the requests that we got to get done, it comes from our awesome patrons who who we love. So, what questions do we have this week? Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game. Where for as little as two bucks a month, you can ask a question that we will answer on each and every single one of these Power Hour podcasts. First up, from Alex Perez. Aliens invade, and they challenge you to two miscreants to a challenge. 
You both have to choose three individual multiplayer games of your choice to defeat the head alien in a one-on-one -on -one challenge and the fate of the human race. Just buy into the Bill and Ted bogus journey style. What three games do you choose? Uh, and also, you don't have to use this one or maybe use it for next week. Fuck it, we'll just do it now. Assuming you both won, you two are now given a choice for one final and agreed-upon game in which you are now both rivals and must go head-to-head -head or can be doomed to live forever in John's crusty corner. So you're either the leader of Earth or you live in the crust. Oh, God. <laughs> um, my three games. So one of them would definitely be a Call of Duty for me. Um... Ah, but it's got to be multiplayer. Uh, I would, I might choose PUBG. Um, my third, I could probably either go Tecmo Super Bowl or something like Fall Guys. I'm like surprisingly good at that game, so I, I would do something like that. All right. Makes sense. Uh, I think I... I mean, if I have to save the goddamn human race, then, you know, I'm going for what daddy knows. So, Star Fox 64, because there is a multiplayer component of it. They uh, want real multiplayer games, not that Fuck you! One. It's got multiplayer. That's not a real one versus one. One versus one. Fate of the planet. I can goddamn do it. You know what? Actually, let me change my one answer. I'm throwing in Tetris 99. You know what? I for the sake of the planet, I'll I'll give you that, Brian. <laughs> All right, so you're doing Star Fox sixty four. Yep. You know what? I I'll get a little penisy. I'll throw the gauntlet down on Super Street Fighter two, but just the Genesis Ooh. version. So I'm playing I'm playing with home base advantage here. And uh shit, what else do I think I'd have a chance at better than most people? Do I hmm. Do I, do I get penisy and go Mario Kart? Because as long as they're not one of these speed running, co running cocksuckers, I think I could put a fight up in Mario Kart 64. Would, do you no feel more confident no bullshit. in Mario Kart or Smash Brothers? Oh, Mario Kart. Mm. Easily Mario Kart. Fucking Smash Brothers. Like, I can beat people who don't play it a lot, but if you give me against someone who like actually kind of practices, I get whomped. Hmm. Maybe Back in the day, maybe Smash 64 <clears throat> I could do because that's like the least autistic one. But outside of that, <laughs> damn it. Um, back in the day, I definitely would have said some of the UFC games, but I just haven't played them in so long that I don't. I, yeah, I don't know. I I'm actually shocked you didn't go UFC. I was going to, but like I said, I haven't played it in so long. So as if I could have a training montage to prepare for it, then yeah, I would definitely do that. I could also do Titanfall where I whooped on your ass so good. I mean, first time I ever played. <laughs> Christ. Jim, I mean, I'm willing to bet if we play 10 games of Star Fox 64, it might be half and half against each other. I'm just saying. No, it would not be half and half. But you know my bullshit. It's all I'm oh, saying. I know your bullshit. I know it all too well. <laughs> And then if we had to play each other. That we agree upon. Yeah, oh, we'd need a, a neutral game. Like, something neither of us play much. Like, so, Dead by Daylight. Uh, obviously. <laughs> um, it would, yeah, like, to your point, it would almost, the only way it would be fair is if we just picked a game neither of us ever played before. Which yeah, I lose yeah. at, like, 90% of the time anyway when we do that shit. But. Because <laughs> I was going to say one of the wrestling games, but I always whoop your ass in those, so. <laughs> Stupid ass SmackDown versus Raw. <laughs> we both do the same things. I just do it a little better. You knock them down, taunt, 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 reverse, reverse, reverse. Special, special, special. <laughs> I mean, it, did, it didn't help that I like you know stopped playing wrestling games at no mercy. And it's like, oh yeah, I play wrestling games. I'll play SmackDown versus Raw with you. <laughs> yeah, big I show think... versus Rey Mysterio. This should be easy. Yeah, to keep it fair. Yeah, it just I would I would put it at. Any any kind of random. My only thing is, I probably to keep it really fair, we couldn't do a fighting game because I think that realm is just you. You've played so many more. I so played like, more. Yeah. Um, I'd probably say shooters aren't really fair to you. 
No. I, no, I would agree to that. Um, You're better than me at them. So as long as it's not a kart racer, racing games might be... Well, I, I did play a lot of racing games, but that would probably be kind of safe. As long as it's not kart, if it's not too emulating of Mario Kart. Um, yeah, a racing game might work. Or sp- or sports, honestly. Like sport, even though I know when we went through sports, I even though I barely, even in golf that I didn't know and I had to ask you for clubs, I still beat you. <laughs> Next time I don't give you the advice. <laughs> can even, I, can, I can tell you the strategy. It's like any other game we play, Brian. I can tell you the strategy. The strategy is right. But when it comes to execution, that's where I falter. Jim, you know what? I would. Uh, it's not a video game. I would I would face one-on-one on Hero Escape. <laughs> <laughs> Too much bullshit. Just, just give me Parmenio and it's one decided to die. <laughs> Too much bullshit. Can't do it. We'll do Hero Clicks. I don't have to do as many defense rolls. <laughs> I, you know what, we got to now we got to make a video of uh, of me me versus you in Star Fox sixty four. You got let, let me borrow it, let me play it for like a week, so I can no 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 no, on, no 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 Mister, I'm so good at everything. No 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 get, no no no. Oh, but you're Mister Confident in it. Let me I let me confident. get some time. I need I need some practice in it. Even though I beat it way quicker than you, I still need to practice. I was <laughs> ten, <laughs> and then the rule is. You beat me. Every time you beat me, I drink a quarter of a beer. But if every time I beat you, you finish a whole beer. Oh, God. <laughs> Chip's like, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This all falls apart. <laughs> it's all coming to roost. No, I like. I love that question, though. Thank you, bud. <laughs> Next up from Todd Howard Sucks. Let's say you have the necessary training. Are you transported to a, You are transported to a medieval war. What is your armor slash weapon setup? Hmm. Medieval war. I don't want to go heavy armor, and I don't want to go like um, a big spear or anything that's too heavy. I'd probably kind of keep it simpler to like a sword and a shield combo like do something like that or two two swords it would be one or the other um but i'd want armor that's like not the heaviest allow me to kind of move around a little bit um yeah something like that or like an axe so, so something that you can swing with that you don't really need both hands if you need to use one hand you could so probably sealed sh- shield and axe or shield and sword Bow and arrow cavalry with light chain mail armor so I can run like hell after I shoot a couple arrows at you because I <laughs> am a pussy. You would never hit anything. <laughs> well, I'd have a better chance of not getting hit. <sighs> ah, such a bitch. <laughs> you know what? You can have your glory of dying on the field. I don't give a shit about that. And the archers on horses, they didn't really, they had to keep it, their armor basically non existent so they could move faster. So you'd just know. be basically fully exposed. Oh, basically. That's why I'm saying the light chain mail. Give me a little bit of something. <laughs> Bitch. See, I expected you to be like crossbow on top of the castle. <laughs> Ooh, that's even better. <laughs> oh, shit, a trebuchet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Speaking, did you see that game? I think we talked about it before, but it's a random game where like someone's sent back in medieval times, and it's like a ton of people fighting, but you're literally like going around with machine guns, grenade launchers. Like, you're using modern weapons, and you got to, like, alter time. But you're doing it in these grand campaigns of, like, you know, fucking... You can even, like, somehow unlock a car and just drive through, like, fucking rows of dudes in armor and horses and shit. It looks so goddamn cool. I don't know if it's coming up out this year, um, but it looks badass. Uh, no, I haven't heard about that at all, so I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. But I love that question. Yeah, no, that's no, that's a good... I'll have to look into that. That sounds really freaking cool, actually. Yeah. All right, yeah, no, great, great one. And last up from Burn Retinas. The best fast food fries has been a topic. How about which restaurant has your favorite bread? Ooh, restaurant with favorite bread. There's a lot of ways you can go in this one, man. Because the breadsticks from Olive Garden are known for a reason. The cheddar biscuits from Red Lobster are, of course, delicious. Rest in peace. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So I guess you can't even use that as an answer. Texas Roadhouse bread is damn good. It's really good. And hits keep on coming. Uh, but getting back to what we were saying, <clears throat> you can go many ways, but you know what? I'm going to keep the simple answer. I will be a sucker for the Olive Garden breadsticks uh, just because I like the, I'll call it the versatility of especially maybe it's because it's that type of food is that you can just eat the breadsticks by themselves. But a lot of times you're going to save it to kind of uh, to, to pick up the sauce of whatever you're eating. Um, and while I like Texas Roadhouse and Steakhouse bread, I'm not saving that. For, like, if I'm getting a steak there, I'm not saving that to soak up juices from my steak. So, for versatility, I'm going with the breadsticks. That's fair. And I'm going to go with sentimentality and go with Longhorn because that is my daughter's favorite. Every time we're like, do you want to go to a restaurant? She always perks up and goes, to the place with the bread I like? And so, that's just, she only ever wants to go to Longhorn because of that, so... She almost gets mm. disappointed when we go to, like, you know, anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Bread is damn... Bread is underrated, Jim. It is. Hell, even even if you go to the breadsticks of, like, fucking... People shit on Pizza Hut, but a nice greaseball breadstick from there to soak up all the... <laughs> give it all... You know, get that marinara <laughs> with it. A little dippy root. <laughs> damn it, Jim. What? It is greasy. cheesy bread. Yeah, I go cheesy bread. The cheesy bread's delicious as well. Yeah. Uh, probably well, superior. shit, you remember our buddy Chris loved when, uh, when I was working at Bertucci's, the rolls. Mm. Those things were delicious. That they were. Were the good old college here escape nights or Left for Dead nights. Mm -hmm. Five, five, five dominoes yeah. and a shitload of breadsticks. <laughs> now I want to go eat all the bread. Bri, get fat. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Bri, eat the carbs. <laughs> You're married with kids. It doesn't goddamn matter. Just do it. <laughs> Every day's a blessing. Live your best life. <laughs> Just don't be shocked when it ends at 54. Damn it. <clears throat> no, but thank you for the questions, guys. Love them. Thank you for the support. And like we always say, get those questions in each and every week. Yep, definitely. We love to have you guys out there participating with us. And speaking of participation, head on over to iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. This podcast is on all three platforms. If you're new to the show, please leave some comments, leave some reviews, leave some subs. Anything you can do can and will help the page. And for even a little bit more interaction this week, I might be doing a little bit of a giveaway at, at some point in the show. So a few bastards who tune out early, you miss out. And for you who only sit around for giveaways, well, now you got to listen to the whole thing. So screw you. <laughs> oh, Jim. Um, this episode. Boost our time retention on YouTube. I like it. Um, this episode, we're saying goodbye to two uh, two major staples of our gaming life growing up. And the first one, um, I felt like kind of really came out of nowhere. The one we knew about, but uh, the one we did not was saying goodbye to this old friend. Good old Game Informer. Yep. No, no longer with us. And... Uh, you know, um, Game Informer was the last bastion of any form of gaming magazine, and it's honestly the one I collected the most. Like, I never had Nintendo Power as a kid. Um, what what was the what was the other big one for gaming magazines? Uh, there was like GameSpot, and there is Electronic Gaming Game Monthly. Spot. Yeah. So, Game Informer. Uh, I think most of us probably all have for the same reason. At GameStop, you sign up for their yearly whatever, you get the monthly, and you know what? Like I said, I have a ginormous stack of these. I don't know how many exactly. Um, perfect poop material is what I call it. I never really dove into it for anything other than that. Like, I didn't go into it for guides or really care like about games because, let's be honest, by the time Jim and I were still doing this, you had the internet. So you didn't need it. And then I remember for a while they started offering like the digital. Um, I don't, I just don't see the appeal of digital magazines for me. And yeah, I think this was probably just a long time coming. It was going to go away eventually, but, but it's, it's sad to see it go. And it still came out of nowhere too. Like, yeah. Like everyone was shocked about it basically. And it sucks because like, yeah, we all meme on GameStop and know, what do you call it, 
uh, you know, the troubles that GameStop has and all their failed fucking things a couple years back with, like, NFTs and trying to hop on all the stupid trends and shit like that. So, I mean, they find new ways to screw themselves over. But, I mean, I'll be honest here. I kind of switched to digital Game Informer, like, I got off the paper ones just because I was I started the wane from even opening them on the toilet. I was like, well, I just have my phone here, and then by the time I just send my email, I never opened them because I'm not reading a digital magazine. So it's a it's a perk I never took advantage of after a while, unfortunately, because there was a while where I was reading every single one almost like back to front. Like their interviews were pretty cool in there. Um, their game <clears throat> reviews, while they were dated, they were pretty good, and like the. There was a good way to like get a heads up on indie games too. Like they would have some pretty good write ups on a lot of indie games that you wouldn't have heard of any other way at the time, unless you were like really into social media or like the forum scene. So it definitely had a place. It was a cool little magazine, and like I'm not gonna be like heartbroken that it's gone. Like you look on Twitter and everyone's like, "This is a disaster." Ah! When really it's like, man, most of you probably haven't read Game Informer in like five, six years. Like, let's not pretend here. And it's the same people who are, like, always saying to boycott GameStop who are, like, you know, crying about Game Informer being shut down. It's like you probably haven't even received it in, like, a decade. But all the all the posturing aside, it, it sucks that people are losing their jobs. And it was, like, it, it was like the last bastion of real, like, legit gaming stuff for the GameStop brand. Because there's a video out there of, like, people going through Game Informer's, like, warehouse. And they just have so much gaming memorabilia and this gigantic collection of old stuff in there. So, like, it seemed like that was, like, where the real heart of gaming was lying in that whole company at this point. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I, con- I can't honestly think of how any magazine really survives anymore. Like, like, on, like the, the sections are, are significantly smaller in supermarkets. Even nowadays, like, in most supermarkets where they used to be, like, when you were checking out, they're just filled with candy and half the time toys. So now they're relegated over to their own little section where it's a, usually only one or two shelf, shelves full. Um, you know, back in the day they had their thing. But, yeah, I think magazines in general, like you said, most people are like, I'll just – look it up on my phone these tabloids have to be like using ai at this point and like only ai for their articles because like are they really gonna be paying like no one's buying these things you you imagine like i'm sure boomers out there are still getting their like people or their daily star whatever the hell that's called for all like their hot juicy gossip for people who don't like sit on social media all day like i do so (laughs) (laughs) like i'm sure like do you think like people are but i don't i can't imagine someone just like Oh, I'm just going to randomly go in the store. I feel like if you're subscribed, it's probably one of those things like I'm not going to go through the effort to unsubscribe so they still get them. But like to just walk in a store and just pick one up and like buy a random ass one. I don't know. I feel like I never see anyone at those sections at all. Yeah. Like I see them at book sections more than magazines. And it's like. You know, it it was a it's like a time capsule. It's same as you could almost argue the newspaper. That I think dies with our generation or our parents' generation. Nobody actually gives a shit about newspapers. Yeah, I mean, even really big ones are going by the wayside. Like big big market ones are going away. Um like in Philly, for example, like the Philadelphia Inquirer is still around and I think the Philly Daily News is still around, but anything that was like a one A off that like, in the suburbs, like, the Intelligencer was huge in a couple counties, and that's gone now. Shit like that. So, like, unless you're that old stalwart that, I guess, gets enough money through online subscriptions, I don't know. Dying dying market. Do you think now, like you said, you got the people posturing, it's like, oh, my God, it's a travesty. Yeah, the amount of people that talk show on GameStop, you and I have said all the times, like, yeah, the meme, you're not going to get your value back for games. But at the end of the day, that's it for game like and i don't want to hear we'll support mom and pop gaming stores it's like yeah no like unfortunately if you see 10 of them there's probably two or three that are reasonable and the people aren't kind of rude to you like unfortunately that's just been my experience with most i go to um and gamestop at the end of the day like if you don't want to just get all your games from best buy or walmart well right you can't from best buy anymore (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah, that's close. Yeah, if you just don't want it from Target and Walmart or just online, 
that's that's really it, right? Like so, um, I'm curious though how many people now are going to sell like tons of their game informers or the value of game informers how much are going to go up and and the dirtbag scalpers and collectors are going to like try to maximize on it. They're gonna they're gonna try and there's gonna be some collectors out there who go for it, but like I don't know. I mean, there is a market for everything, so. Like yeah, to me, course. to me, it seems like GameStop's a thing that like no one's gonna be clamoring for, but you know, there's gonna be someone out there. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we say goodbye to you, Game Informer. Uh, like I said, the last true gaming magazine that uh, will have left an impact. Um, I think like this will be one of those things. I'll let like Logan like look through them, and he'll probably be entertained by it. But next generations, I don't think they'll ever get another gaming magazine. Yeah, I mean, there's niche ones out there like Retro Gamer and a lot of other ones that are like fan supported, but it's going to have to be a fan supported thing at this point. Yeah, exactly. But speaking of saying goodbye, Jambers, we it's one we've talked about. We knew it was coming. Uh, good old 360 uh, eShop is no more. And the hub, I don't know if you saw videos, the hub looks weird now. Like, it's a it's a bleak looking thing on the 360 now, and we knew this was coming. Not a shocker. Uh, it had to happen at some point. Um, I also look at that as the last console for the the big boys. Not I'm not counting Nintendo, but like right. w- where your your discs still play your games. That that's really it. Like everything else now, you know, it's just a download code or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I was looking through a uh, few people um, made videos on like the best exclusives. Maybe you want to try and grab before it closes. The list was actually shockingly small of exclusives. Like, it's not it's not just like twenty, but it's not like a hundred games. It, it, it's a kind of small list of exclusives I saw. Um, I think I have all the south park games from when we did it i also have the random uh fuck what what is it called the the warrior game where it's like they put warriors against each other oh yeah deadly warrior Um, or deadliest warrior deadly war yeah Yeah. um i had that um but yeah i mean none of the other games appealed to me enough to even entertain getting but it is sad and you know i do hope in the future i already saw people had modded xbox 360s and one of them was looked awesome where like it was a library of physical games and you go through it like a library and it's like every game that was available they just had like that so you know there's going to be things like that out and available if you really really wanted them or emulation right why did the completionists make a video like that again is he even still around anymore, or has he completely disappeared? Yeah, he, he's kind of around. He he streams here and there with a heavily modded uh, chat. I c- color me shock, Jim. Damn this thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this one, this one's sad for me because it's like, like I said, it's something like we knew was coming. But I think you and I have said many times, it's potentially both our favorite gaming generation console like whatever like where we did the heaviest amount of gaming honestly and like we were deepest in it the collecting like i I don't know it's just it would it's a a console that uh just means probably the most to me when it comes to gaming yeah i mean it it also helps that that generation lasted for ever it lasted like a good 15 years so i mean yeah but yeah, I mean, especially like we're both pushing 40 at this point. And for our age group, like the 360 died, you know, at the, it was like the last hurrah of like, you know, young us who had the time mm-hmm. to game all the time before wives, before kids, you know, early 2010s and shit like that. Just the whole aura of gaming at the time. Yeah. I mean, it was the huge era of like, you know, rock band and for me, sports games and first person shooters, which were our obsession forever. And to a small extent now, like, yeah, it was a hugely influential uh, era. It's sad yeah. to see it go. I mean, like I said, it's a changing in the guard, too, right? Like, we saw the glimpses of, like, the best way of multiplayer gaming was started with that. And 
it also introduced us to this idea of the digital age and digital games. And so it was like also like kind of the beginning of this new era. So it was like, like I said, it was that perfect in between time. Oh yeah. It's where Xbox live really started to take off. Uh, basically setting the precedent for console based multiplayer experiences. Yeah. So, I mean, I know it was on the original Xbox, but I mean, it was, it became what it was. On the yeah. Let's season. be honest. Yeah. So, Xbox 360, Game Informer, we salute you. Uh, cheers. Thank you for all the good times and memories. And, Bri, we almost, almost had another casualty in the past couple weeks. So, luckily, there's been an update. One one good thing about us being off, there's an update of Rooney. So, mm-hmm. but for a while there, for about a good, for a couple days, uh, they formatted us in stupid British time. Uh, yeah, I hate it. On uh, July 30th. Yeah, but from uh, Eurogamer, there was an article from the Digital Foundry section, which is a big, you know, gaming YouTube channel. Uh, Basically, original model Xbox Ones were bricking because they couldn't get new updates to it. So it would give you an error when you would try to go in and do system updates. (coughs) And this affected all the systems uh, basically from... Before 2016, before the seri- the X or the Series S revision. So, yeah, uh, if you had new old stock or you did a factory reset on an original, big, bulky, VCR-looking Xbox One, uh, that thing was basically donezo. And, I mean, that's the version I have still. I still have a launch 2013 Xbox One. It's, sl- it's slow as hell. It's on its last legs and any like it like no matter what wi-fi or anything i have plugged into it like it just can't download faster than like 40 megabytes at this point like this the box itself is just fucked up but i mean it's still there so luckily i've been updating all this time but for anyone else out there it was almost you know donezo now they did tell xbox and xbox pushed through like a server update to fix the issue so it's not an issue anymore but it's one of those things in our new digital future of a sign of things to come like there could be a day where there's an oversight of some sort and all of a sudden just shit stops working. That's the fear of the digital future, right? Like with 360, as I said, last console where you're really going to be like, I can use my desk. These new ones, you're shit out of luck if it can't get an update. So, And that's really yeah. starting with the 8th gen where like discs mainly were just CD keys, like like, there's some you can even get today that have a whole game on the disc, but it's not like a triple A release. Yeah. Yeah. So, I like you said, I'm glad they were, were able to fix it. Um, but I also feel like, especially at this point, it's pretty, like, most people, I think you're a standout, like, in the fact that you got a PS5, but, like, most people have probably upgraded at this point, if they're still active gamers. Oh, what, on the Xbox brand? Yeah, by now. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. But, but Chambers, there's maybe a little light at the end of the tunnel for you instead of fully having to say goodbye to your newfound love's creators. <laughs> right. Of course. Of course I get into something and it almost completely goes away. Speaking of dodging a bullet, now it's not a full dodge. Not a full dodge. Nope. But... There was a post on July 23rd that Humble, the uh, publisher of, what do you call it, My Beloved Slay the Spire, was shutting down completely, and it was going to be laying off its entire 36-person staff. So, luckily, that's not fully the case. So, they provided an update about a little bit later in the day, saying that they were undergoing restructuring, quote-unquote, rather than a full shutdown. So on, ongoing and future projects are said to be unaffected, and the restructure has, quote-unquote, no impact on Humble Bum- Bundle's operations. It is affirmed that, uh, what do you call it? Oh, wait, is it Humble Games? Because hum- or, Humble Games, not Humble Bumble. Yeah, okay, yeah, so they're, or it may, Humble Bundle. Maybe it's under the same umbrella of, like, Humble. Maybe that's what it is, because I hear about Humble Bundles all the time. But yeah. Yeah, so uh, I'm surprised that the staff was only 36 people. But I think I remember seeing a quote tweet from our good friend of the show, Celia Schilling, who was just like, yeah, but like 20-some people are still getting laid off. Like, this is still really bad. Like, you know, on undergoing restructuring, a.k.a. laying off like 75% of your employee force. So, 
Yeah, that's uh, that's some good corporate speak right there. So, mm-hmm. I mean, the good sign is I should still get Slay the Spire 2 next year. But once again, I mean, Maybe. between this and a bunch of other fucking... The tech world, man, like, between the stock market right now, like, crashing like crazy. Uh, we're recording this on August 6th, so if you have stocks right now, good luck. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, all these different companies, like, Intel just laid off, like, 17,000 people or something crazy like that. So, uh, it, it just, I don't know if we're still in, like, a course correction from, like, COVID overhiring or what's going on right now. But all these different game companies are shutting down and let mass layoffs all over the place. Like, there's other ones. There's, like, there was like four of them in the gaming sphere. And I couldn't even think to put all of them on the list for this week to talk about because there's just so many at this point. Every week, it's like, oh, this indie company shuts down. This one shuts down. I'm pretty sure Bungie, like, did a huge set of layoffs over the past week. So, I mean, all they do now is Destiny. So, like, how many people do you need to just push out updates to a game that's been out for, like, seven years now? But just a weird space we're in. Jim, I'm not going to say it's your fault, but why is it when you latch on to things, all of a sudden bad things happen to It you? happens every time. <laughs> You're like, AMC, <laughs> this stock can't fail. <laughs> this can't fail. Everyone loves the movies. <laughs> I did my part. I have, like, I have like 0.02% of a share. I, I'm part of the revolution. <laughs> um, now, to your point, like, we knew there was like, okay, there was the layoffs of like after Microsoft bought all those things and we've talked about other ones. But yeah, it does just seem like these indie ones and we've covered this the same time like when we've talked about beer, right? Like yeah. the brewing in the States like being how crazy exploded, like Humble, I was looking through their their resume, and obviously they have your beloved Slay Aspire, they have Proteus. I mean, they have a ton of games. Um, but it just begs the question, is there just an oversaturation right now? Like, is that maybe still part of the problem? Because there's, just like with entertainment in general, like, I would argue there's there's almost too much, right? Unless you have your sights set on, you're going to make basically bare minimum to create these games that you just you better hope they really love like why else would indie developer need restructuring to your point like and i and i tried finding other articles or background it doesn't seem to make sense they just said it's like basically a business decision uh i i don't know it does it's, it doesn't really make sense to me yeah it's just it's weird I I, I I don't get it. Um, I, I mean, you're probably right. There is just, like, an overabundance of content. There's no possible way to keep up with it all. But, like, this is also just a publisher, though. And, like, they, and like you said, so they, they don't develop. Some, so they don't develop the games? As far as I know, for the most part, they just sell games. Like, you know, they're the distributor. Is there too many distributors? Are they kind of just the middleman at that point. Maybe. I mean, you have limited run, like, distributing games at this point for big names like Konami and shit like that. So, uh, we're it's, the whole industry is just in such a weird spot. Well, that also begs the question, right? Like, how important are distributors versus developers? And is there a reason why it's important to have variety to your distributors, like, at the end of the day, the developer's the one making the game, right? Like, I don't know if distributors have say in anything you do. It always they... depends on, like, uh, like ag- publishing agreements. And, you know, sometimes a publisher will flip the bill to help finish the development of the game. So they'll kind of have mm. their name on it and a say. Like what uh, Sony fucking did with uh, Street Fighter V back in the day. Like, that's why I was exclusive to the PS4, because they helped pay off to develop it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just sucks, and I think you are right. Like, this must be the the same humble as uh, humble bumble, because that's what they said. Like, it's not going to affect them, even though it's a, the team of thirty six is laid off. So, yeah, I guess I guess um, right now we're in a weird time. Like you said, stock market, housing prices, uh, shit ton of layoffs, AI, it's not looking great AI taking AI. over, taking people's jobs. And the people are fighting back, Brian. <laughs> Here's the deal. How many times are SAG people going to 
are are going to do these goddamn uh, boycotts or 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 go on strike. As many didn't times we just as get over take. one. Did, didn't we just get over one with the actors with the actors union? But now it's. Uh, I, I thought guess there was a again. voice actor one too, or was that just lumped in with the actors? The well? voice actors were joining in with the like normal actors one from like last year or two years ago, when whenever that was. Yeah. So. Yeah, this this one's interesting. So basically, the uh, SAG AFTRA's video game voice performance actors, uh, essentially, they're going on strike over AI um, and reading through. The PR for the game companies basically said they're really disappointed because they have agreements on 24 out of 25 issues, but the one issue is um, our offer is directly responsive to sag afters concerns and extends meaningful AI protections that include requiring consent and fair compensation to all performers. Uh, the thing I, I couldn't quite pinpoint was basically they're still saying we're still not going to consent to a contract that allows companies to abuse AI to the detriment of our members. Yeah. So, uh huh. Enough is enough. When these companies get serious about offering an agreement our members can live and work with, we will be here ready to negotiate, said President Fran Drescher. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Um, they want to be protected from AI. They want it in their contract. And. I mean, I guess if you want the professionals, you're going to have to pony up the money. And I kind of get it. Like, we see what deep fakes are these days. Like, literally, you can make any celebrity say whatever you want at any time. Like, these voices, like, it sounds robotic and weird, but it's close enough. And for a lot of these games, especially for, like, you know, some of the more bit parts, why would you need to hire someone at this point? Like, obviously, that sucks, and that's terrible to think about, but... You know, the arts is where the fucking AI is going to kill everyone off first. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, to your point, like, the amount of memes and shit you see, it's like, man, Morgan Freeman and Matthew McConaughey sure did a lot of voiceovers for these little, like, clips. And it's like, no, that's just AI, but it sounds exact. I mean, because obviously there's thousands of hours of audio they can pull from those guys but but to your point right i didn't know miss rachel could say the n-word that many times all right i was shocked damn damn it jim but yeah that's what i'm curious like is this i what i was trying to figure out is is a strike about any company that's willing to utilize ai in any form or is it strictly like they just want further protection for the voice actors themselves that I mean, I, they cannot they they're not allowed like basically here's what i'm imagining in the future is that you you kind of have to copyright your your being like you're if you're a celebrity like your image and your voice you almost have to like copyright in order to avoid ai's or like companies using it but even then it, it's messy because that was the same argument with um uh, fuck, what was it? Uh, the The Last of Us and, and Ellen Page, right? Like, th- didn't she try to sue them because she's like, you use my likeness? Um, I don't think, or I, maybe she tried at one point. Uh, I kind of forget. Like, I definitely Who remember when, no, Lindsay, Lindsey Lohan, Lohan GTA. Yeah. She did it with GTA Five, but I remember there was a big thing. I think it was with Last of Us with the likeness and all that. Um, And, and you see celebrities do that a lot, like with likenesses but yeah with ai <clears throat> i'm sure you're literally programming it to be like make it sound like morgan freeman or whoever like this person this person so there's gonna have to probably be something where if you build a case then you have to see the original code that was written to generate the ai and if you did use their name then you owe them a certain something yeah definitely or it gives them something that they can strike down and just Stop the abuse, basically. Um, I, I I don't blame the actors on this one, like, at all. Like, if I yeah. was a voice actor, I'd be shitting bricks right now. It's ba- I mean, it's bad enough, like... I, mean, I know we said it was, like, overblown, and I still kind of think it was, but, like, it's bad enough that, like, established voice actors in roles don't get that role for when, say, movies come around. Or they can even easily be replaced just for a bigger name in the actual video game franchise they work on. Like we saw with, like, David Hayter being replaced by Kiefer Sutherland. So... You know, it it just happens, and it, it's you know one of the more underpaid acting gigs in all of entertainment and shit like that. So, 
Yeah, I'd put my foot down. Fuck it. I mean, could there be a blowback, though, that at this point, couldn't companies just already go to AI? Easily. They could just tell them to get fucked. It just... I mean, I'm not like you said with the copyright and stuff like that. I don't know what the all the legalese around that, but these companies have the money to get around a lot of shit. So if there's well, gonna be a, if there's gonna be a way to get around it, a uh, big billion dollar company like Warner WB is gonna do it. So I'm the one between us that cares about story, cares about probably a little more presentation and things. Boring. <laughs> do you does uh, voice acting in video games ever really affect your true feelings on the game? Not really. So for like someone like you, this this whether they had professionals or AI, you'd be indifferent either way. I mean, it, it's weird because like you can definitely tell when there is a bunch of amateurs working on a game. Like sure, you can tell. So there is a quality of life there. It's almost it's probably a thing that I just really take for granted. Where it's like, well, yeah, of course it sounds good. Whatever. And people working on it. You know, who gives a fuck? But, you know, right. If I can quote the Cinderella song, you don't know what it's got, you got until it's gone. You don't know what you got until it's gone. There you go. I just quoted it. But, but I mean, yeah, can AI simulate the crap that was the original Resident Evil line deliveries? I mean, I don't I even mean, know if you can fake that. That's what I mean. Like, so sometimes you need the amateur terrible voice acting to be like, like, we love cheesy, terrible movies, too. It's like, sometimes it's so bad, it's good. You're not going to get a troll, too, with AI, all right? <laughs> exactly. It's going to be too polished. So, I, I mean, here's the deal. We know AI is only going to get bigger, more accurate, or whatever term you want to use. So yeah, I think they're they're at that weird stage now. Kind of like probably back when not not quite the same, but like when Napster came out. Like how do you navigate and make this illegal or this or that? Like it's weird cuz then then you tie into like it's the same idea as like when you upload YouTube. If you use someone's footage, but it's a fair use thing, like is there an aspect to AI that becomes fair use? Like if you sample enough various things does it discount like 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 i said it's such a fucking weird gray area that ugh, i don't know it's gonna get messy and i feel bad for people in in the arts that like yeah i'd be pretty terrified too i mean you see this with uh just even like regular art or 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 a digital artist and tattoo artists like and everything it's like like that shit is gonna happen more and more so yeah and actually that napster that's a good comparison because that that and like Pirate Bay and just streaming in general seem like the end times. Like anyone in the those fields was thinking like, oh, my God, we're so fucked now. And everything kind of course corrected after a while. So maybe that'll happen again with this. I don't know. Or maybe we're entering a new era. I, I, I think it course. Zoomers, I think it course Zoomers are afraid of piracy. They never pirate anything. So... It could just be a generational thing, too. I, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it's... But then again, then again, you look at, like, say, what... Uh, what was that first AI that people started to play with, like, two years ago? And you would put in the prompts... Chat, GP... No, no, no. Or... Like, Dolly. D Dolly, oh, whatever yeah, that yeah, was. Yeah. And you would put in, like, the prompts, and you would get these, like, mutated freak shows, and everyone would post them and laugh about it. And then, like... Six months later, you had, like, Google making stuff that you're like, oh, it looks kind of pretty good. Like, maybe we are hitting that event horizon where AI starts to get a little too good. What? There was, like, and this was back when there was Dolly and it was still new. Wasn't there, like, this big story? I think, I, I forget if it was on Press and Steve, but, like, basically they made an AI chick who was also made AI songs. And she had, like... 20 million like some crazy number of followers and it's just like it was all ai but like if you just scrolled past like you would have never known it was an actual ai person like it was that good already so to your point like yeah and then the music like it wasn't good but if you compared it to other pop shit of today you might be like yeah it's just another another random one you know so 
yeah, I don't know. It, it's 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 uh, the future is definitely becoming more and more like Blade Runner. Right. If anything, the future is becoming more like. Hold on a second. Damn it! I was just thinking of it. Uh, right. Do you think the future was told to us by the 2002 Al Pacino classic Simone? I, I am not familiar with this, Jim. I think that's like a movie where they use like computers to like artificially create like a pop star and shit like that. I think that was like the whole premise behind it. Um. And then I think it eventually started like becoming like learning by itself and all that stuff. Which is well, obviously that's the terrifying part of it, right? Like once it becomes self, anything becomes self learning, and it's like improving on to to a level like. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm i torn because I'm someone – I feel like our generation is really good at – we accept technology and we adapt to it and try and use it to our benefit. But, yeah, what point is it uh, – this went too far. AI porn. When that gets really good, that's when it'll go too far. Because you know someone's going to make it go way too far eventually. Because that is the well, way of things on the internet. Well, and then it becomes, yeah, what is way too, like, 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 is it when you're like, no, uh, top level actor, we're not going to hire you for a movie. We're just going to generate you and that's it. Like, is rock going to show up in every movie if he just licenses out his likeness and then you will literally see him in every movie moving forward. How's that different from now? <laughs> Cause there's still some movies you don't have to see him in. <laughs> right. The future is now. I, I don't know. It's, yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine and The Rock coming to a theater near you. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Jim, go see Deadpool. I do have to go see that still. Actually, you're home alone. Go fucking see it tomorrow. Nah, I'm getting picking the wife and kid up tomorrow. Even better. Before you do, go see it. <laughs> Bro, I, I have to register my kid for for machine pitch. I have responsibilities. Just do it, bitch. I have things to do. <sighs> so, yeah, um, we'll see what, what follows up with this. If it's anything like the original one, how long did that original strike happen with the actors? That I felt like that went on for a, quite a while. It was good at least six months, if not longer. Yeah. Maybe close to a year, something like that. It went on for a long time. I'm curious how, I, I hate to say it, but how serious this one is taken compared to that one. I do like how everyone's like, uh, we don't have money to pay these actors, but we just gave, like, what, a trillion dollars to, like, three actors in Marvel movies to keep them around? It's about money generation, Jim. RDJ getting paid again. Why not even have to show his fucking face? I mean, can't show deny it. talent. Hey, Bri, show us your face. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Jim, he's going to be the next Black Panther. <laughs> oh, I've seen the memes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, speaking of AI, somebody's already done that. They literally took them from Tropic Thunder and put them in, in in the Black Panther scenes. And it's scary how goddamn close it actually looks like. It's, yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm back in. AI rules, baby. Bring it on. The future is now. Uh, Chambers. Well, this whole episode, as we said, we're saying goodbye to shit. And we're going to cap it off with a goodbye that... I didn't even know it was a thing that existed. But it's I will mention, it is just a rumor, and this is from NintendoEverything.com, that the Mario and Sonic series is finished, which was always tied into the Olympics, um, because there is no Mario and Sonic game for this year's Olympics. Uh, but it sounds like, uh, from, from the sources, if you click throughout the link, that... Numerous people have basically said that the series is finished, and in total there was f uh, six games. Yeah, and right now, basically, that the International Olympics Committee moved on from its deal with Nintendo and Sega since it wanted to look at other partners with NFTs and esports. He added that the International Olympic Committee wanted to bring it back themselves internally and look at other partners so they could get more money. The Paris 2024 games released Olympics Go Paris 2024 primarily to mobile, but it is on PC as well. And, like, I remember the first Mario and Sonic at the Olympics back in, like, what, 2008, I want to say? Maybe for that Olympics, maybe 2006. 
Like, that was, like, a big deal. Because it was, like, holy shit, Sonic and Mario are in a game together. Like, I think that was yeah, before... it was 2008. Yeah. I think that was before Smash Brawl, if I'm remembering correctly. So, like, that was pretty crazy. And it's been a stalwart every year since then. So, yeah, it's it's a series I never really played, but I do have some of the games just because I'm a stupid collector. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. It's weird to see it go because... Eventually, I was kind of like, oh, yeah, there is no Mario and Sonic, is there? Like, it's something I didn't think about until I saw it, and I went, oh, yeah. This is one I did not even know existed, and it made sense because I realized it was basically all Wii and DS, and, and primarily, there was only one game on the Switch. Yeah, so, the 2020 game. Yeah, so it completely escaped me. Uh, look, I was I started to decide, like, I was like, let me go back and look through them, and yeah. It's gimmicky to Jim's point. I think it would have been cool back in the day had I realized, like, oh yeah, if this was if this was the first one to include them, that that's pretty neat. But uh, I, I've heard yeah. they're all fine. Like it's it, it's an Olympics video game. Like it's just a bunch of collection of mini you know Olympic style games, and you play as them with your favorite characters. There's even what do you call it? You ne- you never saw the like two player arcade setups at like any Dave and Buster's or shit like that. No. No, I didn't. Which is why I said, like, I'm shocked I didn't I never heard much about this, which leads me to believe it must have been not that great. Yeah, I mean it was never like critically acclaimed or like a super huge seller after the first one, but yeah. it was around. So if anyone out there wants to have a little piece of a now dead franchise, I have a spare copy of Mario and Sonic at the twenty fourteen Winter Olympics on the Wii U. That can be yours. <laughs> And all you have to do is just comment over on YouTube. Respond to anything about this episode on YouTube and, well, North America only. I'm not paying international shipping shit. But if you do (laughs) North America only, and what do you call it, and you comment on YouTube, I will send this your way. Nice. I'll announce the winner in the next episode. Jim, we might have to add that to our games that we play against each other and turn to a, a drinking game. This one, I mean, I do have a couple of these. I have another copy of this, so that's why this is this week's giveaway. But yeah, keeping it topical as well. But yeah, um, that's it. Might not be a bad one. I've never touched it. You've never touched it. I can dust off the old Wii U. Right, things can be done. Yeah, but that console sucks. It's beautiful, Brian. <laughs> and plus, we can either pick between the Winter Olympics or the Summer Olympics in 2016. The world is our oyster, Brian. Here's the deal. I would be shocked if there's a large contingent of people out there. It's like, no, it's not coming out. No. There is no God. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, shit, man. This really has been the uh, the send-off video for, for a series that have been around for a while. Some much better than others. <laughs> True. But, yeah. But publishers closing. Actors going on strike. Companies closing, systems almost dying. Oh my God, what a depressing episode! <laughs> but Chambers, how has that beer treat you throughout the episode? Right. If I could keep this review simple, wahoo! <laughs> you know, still, is it worth twenty two bucks? No, it's not worth twenty two bucks. You can find an IPA like this basically anywhere. I basically yeah. paid for a can design at this point, but. You know what? 6.5%. It was still very, very good. So I have no complaints with my purchase. Like, it wasn't a disaster. It's just overpriced. That's all. So it's like the Mario and Sonic Olympic Games. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> Comment down so, below for yeah. your own chance. This beer, uh, highly recommend. It's an average price beer. Like I said, it goes down really smooth. Perfect for summer. Get it while you can. I'd recommend it, even if you're not a big beer drinker. Um, just avoid it if you hate fruity beer is my only suggestion. But uh, with that, everyone, we want to say thank you all so much for listening, for watching. If you are watching on YouTube, please hit the notification bell and hit subscribe. Comment below. Let us know what you like, what you didn't like. And if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, 
definitely hit subscribe. It would mean a lot to us. And if you leave us a five-star rating, uh, we will read whatever you want to comment on, even if it's Jim and his big head or whatever you want. We will read it on each and every one of these Power Hour podcasts. Look, <laughs> I know I, I know this about myself. I'm, I'm just saying. So Right, right. That. That, look, I have to live the bucket hat life, all right? It's the only <laughs> hat that fits. No, God damn it. No. Love that life. With that, I want to say have a good night, everyone, and cheers. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Fucking bucket hat. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> no. <laughs>